Commanders. <laughs> Good morning. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. <clears throat> Re-recording this video here. I had some technical issues apparently, and I was recording the last one late at night. So, you know, it is what it is. Sound like Scopely with my uh, <laughs> quality checks there. Um, so appreciate the, the comments in my last video to get this fixed. So I want to talk about the silent hostels and actually show you the uh, some of the things I was looking at um, that I failed to build the show in the last video because of my haste to get the video out, I suppose. So, anyways, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit the like button and the bell notification uh, to keep aware of future content as it's come as it is released or comes out. Okay, so let's talk about the silent hostels a little bit. Pull up. Let's see here, silent enemies. Okay, so we'll kind of just try and get to the meat of this and then we'll go into the battle reports to talk about that and how they work. I want to show you some of that and then talk about a couple of the crews that uh, we'll look at some battle reports to show that. So here's a battleship. It's just a 55 just because that's kind of the range I'm hitting right now. Um, so let's talk about their abilities. Uh, Ruthless Pursuit increases critical chance by 100% for the first four rounds. Um, and then Deadly Strike is interesting, but um, basically that first one, what, what, what you're talking about there is for the first four rounds, 100% chance criticals. Deadly Strike is increases critical damage by 350% at the start of each round. So for the whole battle, it's going to increase its critical damage by 350%. Um, which is pretty massive. So the longer the battle goes, the greater the chance you're going to get hammered and die. So you want to limit that, you want to take them out quickly. Um, and we'll talk about why some of the crews work better than the others. Uh, this hostile's critical damage cannot be reduced below 50%. Um, so with officers like Trip Tucker and so forth, you can only reduce it to 50%. And then burning for the fix first six rounds of combat. So let's hop into some of talk about some of the um, battle reports. Uh, let's see here. So I hit some rebooters. Let's go down to where I was testing last night, right there. And this is the one with the Severus crew. So Severus, Sharvenik, and Decius. Severus, um, he has 10% by himself and gets 5% synergy from Sharvenik and Decius for a total 20%. So 20% of the whole health each turn if the player ship is burning. So if your ship is burning, you're going to be able to take away whole health from the, from the opponent. Um, which the opponent does trigger burning during the first six rounds, so it's important um, in that period. So exploit overheat, 60% damage to damage if the player ship is burning. So you're gonna increase your damage each round, which is which is really important. So you're doing extra damage, you're taking away whole health, all good things. Sharvenik, um, mind games, so this is her officer ability, 1600% of the crew's health bonus to armor piercing. For me, you're still gonna get some benefit, but not largely. I mean, mostly that would be if you were trying to overcome the mitigation from um, a battleship because their armor is their uh, where they get most of their mitigation from uh, typically so um, but the biggest thing is giving um, D or not DCS sorry um, giving Severus <laughs> giving him the synergy I did actually run a test where I tried to drop Sharvenik and throw Trip Tucker on there um, the Browns went from five rounds to 10, and so it was not as effective. So um, just throwing that out there so you know I've, I've looked at that, didn't really see that as helpful. DCS, 10% damage each time the ship gets hit. Once again, not massive, but it does help um, with the synergy for Severus. So let's look at a battle log. So 105, so five rounds, I do have, um, this is probably helpful. I forgot to go over this in my last video. I used Fix It Up Right, so I've got Tendi below decks, I've got Hugh below decks, and then I have Tom Paris for some extra mitigation there. 
Okay, so go back to the battle log. We've got Tom Paris activating Charvenic, Severus, minus 20% of the opponent's whole health each round. The player ship is burning. Um, and Severus, the extra damage if the player ship is burning. So let's look at the criticals real quick. So here we've got three, 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 almost four million shots right there, doing about 275, almost 300,000 whole health. Okay, we're about the same range there. Let's go down to round two, and the shots are bigger. You can see six, seven, six, taking more whole health. Seven, still about the same range, because we're still in the same round. If we go down to three, nine million shots, 10 million, and let's see, 13 million. So the shots are increasing in damage. Once again, that 350% is increasing the damage each round. Okay, so that's important to note. So you want to be able to take these out quickly. Okay, and I think since it only goes four rounds of the criticals, the interesting thing that we can look at here too, let's find... There we go. Okay, I think this is the one I wanted to look at. 20 rounds? Yes. Okay, so 20 rounds with Janeway Crew, and it would have went even longer because I didn't even beat it. So, I'm going to scroll down to the last... Just give me a minute here to get down to the bottom. I wish there was a way. It keeps shifting where it has the arrow. Helpful, but not... All right, come on. Didn't even go down to the next round. So, <laughs> critical at the very end, as you can see, is massive. 54 million compared to what we were seeing before. Um, so once again, this here proves with 15 million, almost 16 million going to the hole, right? Um, so unless you get fortune to have a round where a critical hits and Janeway is able to zero out the damage, which we'll talk about just as a as we scroll up here a little bit, um, it's it's gonna keep increasing the amount of critical damage it will do, even though the criticals are 100% in the first four rounds, and even though it's only uh, you'll even though the um, the percentage chance is pretty low. The rest of the battle, if it does pop a critical, it is going to hurt. So let's go back to the top, and I want to talk through the Janeway crew once again for those who aren't as familiar with Janeway. Some of you are, but just to kind of cover it in case there's people who are like, I can't remember what Janeway does, so let's talk about that. So, we're back to the beginning. Very good. So Janeway... Uh, it's going to depend upon synergy. She can get full synergy to completely stop damage. But I want to put Tucker on there to um, reduce the critical damage. So you might have better results a little bit if you had the full Janeway crew. But let's talk through the testing that I did. So when you take whole damage from a non-player hostile, so you have to take damage first for this to trigger, she'll increase the shield mitigation by 13%. So what happens is more damage gets shifted to your shields. And so she gets synergy with the doctor, who has some mitigation as well, based upon your level. And then Trip Tucker is, he, his ability stacks where he's reducing the amount of critical damage. Mine's only tier 1, so if you had a higher tier, it should be much more effective. Okay, so if we hop into the battle log, let's talk, see this happen, okay? So these first few shots, critical, 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 I'm taking some hull damage. And then Janeway procs, okay, so there's her ability. And you see that the damage is much less. We take much less damage um, to our whole health. It's bulk of it's going to shield health. Okay. So we're stopping more damage and it's coming in there. And the numbers look smaller because we're stopping more. But anyways. Um, and then, let's see right here, because we got hit again, we increase our shield mitigation by another 13%, so then it goes completely to the shield. So no whole health damage. 
So that's important to note, uh, just because that's how it works. So if I pull up this spreadsheet here, what I did just get a kind of a more or less apples to apples comparison and it's tough because, well, it took me a while to type all these in. Um, but I did want to see, I kind of said to myself, what does the damage look like when you compare service, the service crew with the Janeway crew here? Um, with Jane, with, with service, you don't have any stopping. It's just the same damage all the way through, even though you're going to take a little bit more damage potentially as the rounds go on. And just so you know, these numbers here, once again, are the amount of whole health that I took. So just trying to see what kind of whole damage I was taking. And this last column is where I have the actual totals, okay? So between the first two rounds, I take nine million damage from the service crew and only two million from the Janeway crew. And once again, as we looked like or as we looked in the battle report, we could see that we took some damage with Janeway and her crew, but then she procs, we take less damage, and then we take no damage for the rest of the round. So pretty impressive. So that's round one, round two, you have the same kind of pattern, and you'll kind of see that throughout the battle report. Um, the, the trick, once again, is that Janeway goes 20 rounds, and the service crew only goes five. So you limit the amount of chances it has to do massive critical shots against you. Um, so that's kind of the difference or the biggest difference is there. You want to take them out fast and Cerberus and his crew does that. Janeway does stop more damage. So theoretically, if you could do enough damage that you're knocking out the hostiles in less rounds. So let's say you're knocking them out in maybe five or six rounds. Because the hostiles you have to hit, um, you know, you're able to do enough damage because your ship's tiered up enough, you're in the right level, and you're in a good spot with the level of ship that you have. Um, then the Janeway crew actually might be better. So that is my theory of why some players are saying Janeway is amazing and service doesn't work as well. I think it depends on how quickly you're able to end those rounds. Um, I think chances are most people are probably going to get <clears throat> more benefit from the service crew because I don't think most people have massive ships for their for their ops level. So so anyways, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, so in two rounds, you take much less with Janeway, but <laughs> the rounds for me at least went a lot longer. So this is kind of the era that we're in, right? We're in this spot where... Um, when the game first came out years ago, those who have been here this long will know. But when the game first came out, you had one hostile crew pretty much. It was, it was the Pike Moreau Chen, uh, Pike Moreau Talon. Um, but they're coming out with these other crews that make the game more interesting to try and figure out. But um, just because one crew works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it works for another person. And it's not just one crew fits all either. I mean... If I had a max trip Tucker, maybe that would make a difference on some of the crewing options that, that I could do, for example. Um, so it was just interesting uh, kind of where we're at. But I hope this information is helpful. I hope it kind of highlights to you the, the difference between the two crews and um, why one crew works better than the other in some situations. Um, and, and once again, these aren't the all exhaustive like lists. It's just two of the most popular ones I saw, uh, the ones I was able to do in my testing. Uh, but I think they're fantastic crew options, just depending upon where you're at. Once again, the Severus crew is probably the most important. Now, I did want to share a couple of tips. Let me hop out here just for reference. So we've got our Federation space here, and then we go over to where the Zindi and whatnot are, and we've got this little Christmas tree area, right? Um, so this is where the hostels are for the silent hostels, and I've tried a couple of different systems. <laughs> I originally went to the 46 just to complete enough to do the event when it first came out for killing hostels. Um, but anyway, so a couple of tips or things to be uh, aware of, I think, that can be helpful. Remember that you can use exocomps when you are attacking these hostiles, so don't forget to pop those before you send out your ships. 
But one thing I found successful is I was, I was able to send my Vorcha to this system with a Cerritos or Titan. I did a Cerritos. Um, so if you can get a Cerritos there, that's fantastic. And then you can buff your, your ship before you send them into the system so you get that extra punch to try and take out the hostiles a little bit quicker. So that's one thing. Another tip or another thing I wanted to share is, and I know that not everyone have or has unlocked the NX-01 Enterprise ship yet, but one thing you can do with the Enterprise is its special ship or its ship ability is you can view a system, a dark space system like these, that, um, that you have visited before with the ship ability. And so one reason why that's key is what happens is there's, um, and, and if you've been to systems, you know, but there are the three ship types, you know, interceptor, battleship, explorer, um, but the spawn rates aren't great. So what happens is if I were to take my Vorcha there, and so if I go to the 55 system, there's like 55s and 57s there. Um, if I take out a few or a handful of the 55s uh, of the explorers, because that's with the triangle, then they don't respawn and all I have left are 57s. So <laughs> what can happen is if someone has already gone into the system and taken out all the ship, if they took out from me, for example, all the 55s before I even get there, then I'm kind of screwed if I can't hit the 57s as well. Um, so that does make it difficult. You can try hitting one of the other ship types, um, won't be as effective, but you know, you may still be able to get some kills off. But if you can take a peek at the system before you even send your ships and determine if it's worth it for you or not, then that is definitely something to consider um, uh, as an option or strategy. And once again, this may come down the road for some people. I share it because I know some people have the NX-01. I ended up buying it so I could um, show it off and do some videos about it um, as part of me being a content creator. Uh, but at some point, hopefully you will be able to unlock the NX-01. I think it's got a great um, short loop, great benefit, um, great uh, favors that come along with being able to unlock the x board. Favors really helps unlock those. So anyways, that's just a tip. Hopefully that's helpful. If you don't have it yet, just kind of put that in the back of your brain until you get it, um, work towards it. I think it's a fantastic ship to help out, and it's a short loop, like I said. So anyways, those are my quick tips. Those, those, that's just a really brief look at my analysis of the difference with the crews. Once again, hope that's helpful. I hope, bottom line, what, what it does is it gives you a couple of options to look at and say to yourself, well, I could try this one, and this is why it works. I can try this one, and this is why it works. Whenever I make videos like this, I, especially lately, I try not to say, here are the best option because ultimately someone comes out with something that works better <laughs> or the game releases something that's better down the road and I want you to understand the logic behind it so you can look at your own crews because you may not have max officers like I do you may not have that and so you might have a crew that works slightly differently or, or whatever like I said they might come out with some new crew options but I want you to understand it so you can look at your own crews and kind of craft your own strategy based upon your own results. So some of this will vary depending upon where you're at. So anyways, once again, hope that's helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Feel free to join the Discord. Um, love to hear from the community and the testing that we're able to do as a group to really uh, kind of find some things, things out and make it easier for you. So anyways, have a good day.